on two. So, good luck. Hi, at Toys R Us, we're trying hard to make shopping pleasant and enjoyable. Each day, we spend a lot of time getting merchandise out on the floor, stocking shelves so that they're full, keeping the store clean, and making sure there are plenty of cashiers available to ring up sales. But we also go one step further by maintaining good customer relations. By customer relations, I mean the way we interact with the customer. That might be smiling when they walk in the front door, or saying hello in an aisle, asking if they need help finding something, and thanking them for shopping with us. Promoting good customer relations is critical because although we're the biggest and the best, we're not the only store that sells toys. Today a customer has choices where to shop, and we want customers everywhere to choose Toys R Us. Did you ever think of what it's like to be a customer in our stores? Imagine the first time you walk through the door. To this customer, the store might be a maze of merchandise that blends together. She might feel lost in our aisles and overwhelmed at our size. She might know exactly what she's looking for, but have no idea where it's located. Or maybe she knows a name, but has no idea of what kind of toy it is. This customer needs our help, and we're counting on you to give it. Think of it this way. When a customer needs assistance, it's not an interruption to your job. It's just one more part of your responsibilities. We've developed a quick four-step process you can follow that will help you do it efficiently. The key word to remember is tact. T-A-C-T. -T. Each letter of this word represents a step you can take to help our customers. The first letter in TACT, T, stands for try to help the customer. Let's watch an example as an employee demonstrates good customer relations using this first simple step. You look like you could use some help. Is there anything I can do? Actually, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to find a chemistry set. Do you know where they are? Oh, let's see. A uh, chemistry set would be in science. That's aisle 5C. Right now we're in aisle 13B. So just go down this cross aisle and turn left at 5C. Just follow the signs. Okay. Thanks for your help. Sure, you're welcome. In this example, the customer looked like she needed help, and the employee took it upon himself to try to help her. You don't have to stop every customer and ask them if they need help. Look for obvious signals. In this example, it was the expression on the person's face. Now let's watch some other examples of how employees can try to help customers. Excuse me, I want to buy this, but uh, I'm a bit confused. I see it pictured on the poster here, but I don't know where it is. Can you help me? Sure. We keep this item in our storeroom because it's difficult to display out here. Um, when you've decided which one you'd like to buy, you just take one of these tickets and you bring it to the register, and that's where you can pay for it. And then the cashier will tell you where you can go to pick it up. All right. Thank you. Sure. Goodbye. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. I've been looking for the Barbie Dream Horse. It was advertised in Sunday's mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. And I've looked all over this aisle, but I haven't seen it. Now, am I looking in the wrong place? No, this is the right aisle, but I just saw the last one this morning. But we should be getting another delivery in a few days. A few days? Yeah. Well, will this ad still be good then? You see, I've looked all over, and this is the lowest price I've seen. I don't want to pay any more for it. Yeah, there's no need to worry. That's our everyday low price, which means everything in this ad will always be sold for that price. We don't run sales, so there's no need to be concerned that tomorrow it'll go up. Oh, so I'll still get this price. That's right. But why don't you call the store first to see if it's in stock? I hate to have you come back out and find it hasn't arrived yet. Yeah, I'll do that. That's a great idea. Okay. Thank you. All right.
In this case, the employee knew we were sold out of the item. But if you didn't know, you might decide to take a look in the storeroom. If you aren't familiar with your storeroom layout, you should definitely call your department head for help. In all of these examples, the employee tried to help the customer and was successful. That should be your first step. But what happens when you try to help and you don't know the answer to the customer's question? Go to the next step. The A in TAC stands for Ask for Help. Here you should look around for a nearby employee who can assist you. Let's see how it's done. Excuse me. I'd like to know if you could help me with something. I like to buy a tent for my son, and it comes with Ninja Turtles on it. A tent? I'm new here, and I'm not that familiar with all the merchandise. But if you'll come with me, I'll find someone who can help you out. Okay. Thomas, can you please help me? Sure, what can I do? Uh, this customer is looking for a tent. He thinks it might have Ninja Turtles on it. A tent? Hmm. Oh, I bet I know what you're talking about. Is it made of plastic and can be used indoors? Yes, you know, that sounds right. One of my friends bought one for their child, mm -hmm. and they put it up in his bedroom. We have a Ninja Turtle Playhouse that fits that description. It's in aisle 10B. It's three aisles over and to your left. It's about halfway up the aisle on the left, and it's in a white and green box. Okay, great. I'll look for it in 10B. 10B. Thanks. Okay. Thomas, thanks for your help. I didn't know what he was talking about. I hate not being able to answer questions. Well, don't get upset. You're new and you don't know where everything is around you. It takes time, but you'll get it. Just remember, if you don't know the answer, find someone who does. Everyone is willing to help you out. And remember, when the store is busy, we have Bill. He's Jeffrey's helper. See, there's Bill now. Okay, thanks again. Take care. Excuse me, uh -huh. I'm looking for a radio-controlled boat. Can you help me? Uh, let's see. I think it's with the computers, but I'm not sure. If you'll wait just a second, I'll get my department head and she'll know, okay? okay. Uh, Joanne? Joanne, could you help me Hi. with this customer? Hi. Sure. Uh, she's looking for a radio-controlled boat. Would that be in the EDC with the computers? Oh, well, you're on the right track. Electronic cars and boats are kept in their own case. It's right around the corner in aisle 4C. Uh -huh. you know, I'm, I'm headed over there. Why don't you come with me and we'll see what we have. Okay. Thanks a lot. Sure. Were you looking for something? This brings us to step three of TACT. The C in TACT stands for Call for Help. You should use this step after you've tried to help the customer and you've looked for another employee to help you. But neither step worked. Or, as in the following scene, you know there's another employee more qualified to help the customer. Now this is a nice piece of a car, yeah. Oh, hey, look nice in this. Yeah, nice and sturdy. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Now look at this one. <laughs> I think the little guy looked pretty good. Looks nice and safe, sturdy. I like, I like. Good price. Hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Hi, I'm interested in buying one of these cars for my son, but I'm really not too sure which one I should buy. Can you give me some information on them? I'm not the expert, uh, but if you wait here, I'll call our ticket writer. She knows everything when it comes to the power wheels. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mary, please come to the ticket desk. Mary to the ticket desk for customer assistance. Just wish I could have helped you more. I mean, I, I work in the other aisle, so that's where I know everything about. Oh, this is Mary. She can give you all of the information you'll need. Great. Well, thank you very much, You're for your very help. You're welcome. Thanks. Hi, what can I tell you about our cars? Hi, well, first thing I'm interested in is some... Even if you can't answer the customer's question, it's important to listen and find out what kind of help he needs. Then you can call someone who is able to provide the answers, just like we saw here. It only took a minute to pick up the phone and call for assistance. Also, you may have noticed that the employee waited until the ticket writer arrived so she could show her which customer needed help. When you call for help, you have the responsibility to make sure the customer gets the assistance he needs. Try to help, ask for help, call for help. If these first three steps haven't given you the right information, then you need to move on to the last step intact. This T stands for Take to Help. It means take the customer to the nearest reliable source of information. 
In the following scene, an inexperienced employee follows the steps of tact, eventually learning that the service desk can help answer the customer's questions. Oh, can you help me? Oh, sure. Oh. What are you looking for? I wanted to get a farmer's says for my daughter, but you're all sold out. Are you going to get any more in? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but stay right here. I'll find out for you. I'll be right back. John, please pick up channel 6 for a customer question. John, channel 6. Hi. I spoke to my department head, and he said the people at our service desk would probably be able to help you. Um, why don't you follow me, and I'll take you there. All right. There are a number of things we can do to find out information about the availability of a product for customers. And if we can't satisfy them right away, the service desk employee may decide to issue a goose slip. That way, we'll have the customer's name and number so we can call them when the item comes in. Let's look at another example of take to help. Oh, excuse me. I can't seem to find a price on this. Can you tell me how much it is? Sure. Let's see. Hmm. You're right. None of these have prices on them. Let me check another. None of these have labels on them. Um, if you'll come with me, mm -hmm. I can scan this and see what the price is. Okay, great. Thanks. In this example, the employee skipped a couple of steps because it was clear that the most effective way to help the customer was to take her to the nearest scanner to get the correct price. There's another important step here that needs to be addressed. The merchandise that wasn't priced can't be left that way. Anytime you encounter this situation, you must tell a department head or manager so the problem can be fixed. Our last example of take to help is one where it's actually best not to help the customer. For example, when the customer is clearly angry about something, but that doesn't mean ignore them. Go directly to step four of our process and take the customer to help. Oh, oh I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Is there a problem that I can help you with? I called your store this morning and asked specifically if you had the Madden football video game. Mm -hmm. So the person on the phone said you had it, so I drove all the way over here. Now I'm here, here's the game, but there aren't any tickets for it. That means you don't have it, right? That is what that's supposed to mean. Supposed to mean? Well, listen, why don't we go over to the service desk and I'll call my manager. She's very concerned that all of our customers are satisfied and maybe she can find the item someplace else. Oh, well, I hope so, or I'm going to be really mad. Come on, why don't we go on over? I think she can help you. Once you get to the service area, put the customer into the care of the highest ranking management person available and let them take it from there. They're trained in handling tough situations, just like we saw here. It's not your job to solve the problem, but you must turn it over to a manager who can. So even in difficult situations, you now know the secret to good customer relations. Most of the time, it's easy to help. It doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't require years of experience. It just involves remembering the word tact. Try to help, ask for help, call for help, and take the help. That's the four-step procedure that will help you help our customers. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Hi, did you find everything you're looking for today? Yeah, I did. And your people were so helpful in helping me find exactly what I wanted. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you have a really nice store. Well, oh, thank you very much. Now that's what I like to hear.
Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. Could you help me with something else? Sure. What can we help you with? I'm looking for a baby monitor. Could you show me that be? Sure. I'd be happy to show you what those are. Right this way. That's exactly what we're here to discuss with you today. Customer service and customer relations. We spent time talking to many of your colleagues about this important issue, and we'd like to share some of those discussions with you now. We don't have to tell you that the last 18 months and two years have been really tough in the retail world. The general economic climate has been struggling for every sale and every penny of profit. Along with the struggle, we're witnessing much change in the industry. Many once renowned companies are faltering, unable to compete. To keep growing, we've got to continue to be the best. When I started the company, the formula for success was quite simple. Keep prices low by creating a self-service store, make it easy for the customer to find what she wants, and process her purchase quickly. There are a few companies trying to compete with us, but in many places, we're the only game in town. We had the self-service concept. A neat, clean sales floor. We were the sole toy store in the area. Plenty of cashiers. As long as we had the product available, then we felt that we were satisfying the customer. We were focused mostly on filling the store, letting them find the merchandise themselves. They wandered and wandered, and if they found what they wanted, that was fine. And if they didn't find it, they left without buying. We had the directories. We figured that was enough for them. And there was no competition. They came in, they wanted, we had it, and out they went. Things have really changed. Our competition these days is getting tougher. Our customers have many choices when they set out to buy toys. They can go to Walmart, Kmart, or Target, to name a few of the big ones. We even have situations where one Toys R Us store is surrounded by five Walmarts within a 20-mile radius. That's competition. I think it opens your eyes. I have Walmart. Our new competitor uh, was Walmart. I have Target. They have Grees at the door. They have individual sales help in each department. I have Kmart. They're able to give the impression that they're there for you the minute you walk into the door till the time you're ready to leave. Children Palace, Venture, and Grandpa. All of the competitors are within a two and a half mile radius of my store. They're doing some good things. I think there's some things that Toys R Us can do better. So it makes you think twice, like, hmm, okay, what do we need to do? You know, if we stop to analyze this competition, we see that we all have some things in common. Sharp pricing, exciting products, pleasant stores, clever advertising. So what will separate us from the competition? What will cause a customer to choose Toys R Us as her shopping destination? Last year, we set out to find the answers to those questions, and we did it by asking customers, about 13,000 of them, what issues are important to them. The results of the survey were exciting. Compared to their experiences at many of our competitors, customers view Toys R Us in quite positive terms. The elements on which we have built our business, such as fair prices, wide selection, and being in stock on hot toys, rated high with our customers. But there are some things they'd like us to do better. For example, our customers want to get answers to their questions about where items are located. They also want the employees on the sales floor to be friendly and knowledgeable. If I don't have the time to go up and down the aisles, <laughs> it sure would be nice to find someone to ask where this toy is. The people who work here ought to be the experts. At least they can try to answer my questions. I would appreciate their help. This store can be so overwhelming. I just like to see a, a smile once in a while. It'll make a big difference. We built our reputation on the concept of self-service. Full, neat, and clean. Plenty of carts, plenty of registers open. Those things haven't changed. All the work done in the store contributes to good customer service. Filling, straightening, pricing, checkouts. Those are obviously still important. But the results of the survey show us that we need to make that concept work even better in today's retail climate. If we can add friendly and helpful to the overall picture, we believe we can keep the customer coming back to us. The customer knows that there's Walmart and that there's Kmart and that there's Target and, and that there's Toys R Us. They're going to go where they feel the most comfortable. We have to start getting into the human element and waiting on the customers. It's that smile to anybody they meet, it's a quick hi, and when you see that look of saying, hey, I don't know what's going on, ask them, you know, do you need some help? It doesn't cost anything to smile. 
Uh, it doesn't cost anything to tell a customer thank you for shopping at Toys R Us. And an important thing from, from our standpoint is to really, go, to really do our best to recognize those employees that do provide real good customer service and go out of our way to recognize that. There's just a lot of little things that we can do to make toys a friendlier place. As a manager, I realize I've got to lead by example. And I go out of my way, uh, especially in the presence of employees and with employees, to show that I'm committed to good customer service myself. What we're talking about is improving our relationship with our customers, doing what we can to make our store a friendly, helpful place to shop. According to our customers, these two factors, friendliness and helpfulness, are very important issues when they decide where to shop. By the way, we'll continue to survey customers on the quality of our service. Their feedback will be relayed to you on a monthly basis. This way, we'll know if we've been successful in improving the shopping environment. If we want to continue to uh, be a leader and be aggressive and, and stay at the top, we have to react. To stay number one in the toy industry, you have to have better customer service than anybody that's around for competition. It's important for all of us to remember that good service still has to be cost effective. After all, our customer's number one issue is still low prices. This means we'll continue to work within the standards of ELP. You will get additional hours each week for the new Jeffrey's helper position, and these must be utilized. You won't see an additional allocation for any other customer relations activities for a couple of reasons. First, the time is already accounted for in the standards, and secondly, what we're asking for usually does not require significant time. It can be as simple as a smile or a friendly hello. Usually questions can be answered quickly and you can get back to your other tasks. One thing I'd like you to remember though, when a customer needs help, it is not an interruption to your work. It's just one more aspect of your work, like stocking and straightening. Another important thing to keep in mind, no one person in your store can be responsible for your relationship with your customers. Everybody has to be on the team. The sole responsibility of Jeffrey's Helper will be assisting customers, but Jeffrey's Helper can't do it all. The customer's perception of our service will be determined by how she is treated at the moment she needs your help. You, rather than Jeffrey's Helper, may be the one she approaches. Make sure she gets your smile and your attention. Good customer relations are contagious, and it starts with you.